Maybank's nearly 60% increase in allowances for impairment losses on loans in the second quarter could be just a one-off event, according to newly appointed group president and CEO Datuk Kairo Saleh Ramli. He explains that the spike in loan loss provision is a preemptive measure in anticipation of weaker external environment outlook in the second half of 2022. Maybank's allowances for impairment losses on loans swelled to $837.6 million for the quarter, a 60% year-on-year surge. This was higher than analysts' expectations as most generally held the view that Maybank had already made sufficient provision in the past. This high provision weighed on Maybank's second quarter net profit, which dropped by 5.4% year-on-year to 1.86 billion ringgit. Earnings were also hit by unrealised mark-to-market losses. Revenue dipped 1.2% year-on-year to 11.2 billion ringgit. The bank declared a first interim dividend of 28 cents per share for the quarter in question. For the first half, net profit declined 10.4% to 3.9 billion, while revenue faltered by 1.8% to 23.1 billion from 23.6 billion previously. Cairo Saleh says Maybank is still trying to look at how the bank can grow responsibly, while at the same time making sure asset quality is maintained. He believes that a lot of companies are trying to come out of the pandemic and that Maybank will be there to support them, which will in turn support economic growth. Maybank's largest bank by asset size, it also says that it is keeping its headline KPI of ROE of between between 9.5 and 10% for FY22, factoring the impact from the one-off prosperity tax announced by the government. Genting saw its second quarter net loss narrow to 59.5 million from a net loss of 563.5 million recorded a year earlier as international borders reopened and more pandemic restrictions were eased. Revenue skyrocketed 94% to 5.7 billion from 2.9 billion, mainly from the group's leisure and hospitality division, which benefited from international borders reopening and pent up demand in gaming and the integrated resorts tourism offerings. Meanwhile, it said revenue from resorts were Gunting improved substantially for the quarter, mainly due to higher business volume from gaming and non-gaming segments. The opening of Gunting Skywalls in February 2022, the group said, also helped to boost non-gaming revenue during the quarter. Both its plantation and power segments also performed better during the quarter. For the first half, Gunting's net loss narrowed to 259.2 million from 895.3 million previously, while revenue spiked 91% to 9.9 billion ringgit. On its prospects, Gunting said its subsidiary Gunting Malaysia is cautiously optimistic on the near-term outlook of the leisure and hospitality industry but remains positive in the longer term. Gunting said that Gunting Malaysia will continue to optimise yield contributions by focusing on key business segments and database marketing efforts. In addition, it said Gunting Malaysia would leverage its assets to attract foreign and domestic visitations to RWG to drive revenue growth. Ex-Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Raza arrived at the High Court today from Kajang Prison under heavy escort by the police and Malaysian Prison Department officers to attend his 1MDB Tanore trial. On the dock today was former Finance Ministry Deputy Secretary General of Policy Datuk Siti Zawiyah Muhammad Desa, who testified that she wasn't involved in drafting her sworn witness testimony and that she was not aware of its content, although she had signed off on the document. She also said she did not know that MOF Inc. had a 25% stake in 1MDB. Siti Zawiya, who is the 26th prosecution witness in the trial, was cross-examined by Najib's defence lawyer Tan Sri Muhammad Shafi Abdullah before High Court Judge Datuk Colin Lawrence Sakira. Shafi got visibly agitated at Siti Zawiya's answers and told Sakira, I don't know why this witness is being produced. She gave a textbook statement. On further questioning, Siti Zawiya admitted that officers in MOF Inc. had drafted parts of her witness statement and that she was given her witness statement at the last minute. In in the 1MDB Tanore trial, Najib had, on September 20, 2018, pleaded not guilty to 25 charges linked to abuse of power and money laundering over hundreds of millions of dollars of funds received in his personal bank accounts. After the day's proceedings were concluded, Najib could be seen waving from the vehicle, bringing him back to Kajang Prison. He is currently serving a 12-year sentence after the federal court had rejected his final appeal against his conviction involving former 1MDB subsidiary SRC International.
Valstead Heavy Industries Corp recorded a net loss of 517,000 for the second quarter compared with the 12.3 million net profit it posted the year before. Revenue for the quarter also dropped, declining 58% year on year to 29.9 million from 47.2 million previously. BHIC attributed the poorer performance to variations in milestones for the Royal Malaysian Navy submarine in service support and refit contracts. As for the first half, BHIC saw its earnings nearly halved to 6 million compared with the 11.4 million posted in the previous year's corresponding period, while revenue ticked up 1.9% to 67.3 million ringgit. As for its prospects, BHIC said with the announcement by the government to continue with the procurement of the littoral combat ship project that the group would continue to reinvent itself to find new business. BHIC added that it would also continue to ensure projects at hand are delivered in a timely manner in line with its reinventing Baustet strategy that is designed to transform the group into a more resilient and sustainable organisation. To recap, the LCS project has been making waves recently for the fact that 6.1 billion ringgit has already been dispersed by the government, but not one single vessel has been completed by Baustet Naval Shipyard. It has been reported that there were several attempts to conceal irregularities in the LCS project, according to the Declassified Forensic Audit Report. Telecom Malaysia is hinting at a likelihood of better-than-expected earnings performance against its initial guidance of a low- to mid-single-digit growth in revenue, according to Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer Imri Mokhtar. He says TM is expecting the growth momentum to continue in the second half in terms of revenue and profit and that the telco will be continuously reinvesting in regard to capital expenditure. Imri adds that if necessary, TM would be providing new market guidance, but not at the present moment. Yesterday, TM announced its highest quarterly net profit in a decade of $378 million as revenue from all lines of services came in higher. Meanwhile, Imri says that TM is in final negotiations with Digital National regarding the commercial arrangement for the access agreement between both parties for the purchase of 5G capacity. In regards to the August 31st deadline for the telcos to buy a stake in DNB, Imri says that there are no changes to the timeline as of now. Apart from being a shareholder, Imri says TM TM's participation as a fibre leasing partner of DNB in the 5G rollout is also progressing well. Buoyed by the good results, TM's counter was among Bursa Malaysia's top gainers today, reaching as high as 6 ringgit 10 in early morning trade. However, it didn't manage to hold on to those gains but still closed 5.3% up on Thursday at 5 ringgit 95.